From here, you can see the front of the imposing La Castellata building and the lush grounds surrounding it. Here we are at the fabulous La Castellata Resort Hotel and Health Spa, the finest symbol of yuppie youth, life, and vigorous good health. Somehow, it vaguely reminds you of a taxi driver's hand. You rub your hand on the rough, pebbled exterior of the hotel. It doesn't matter how loud you shout, there's no curbside service at La Castellata. This is a class joint, bub. The architect who designed La Castellata always insisted upon making a grand entrance. And here it is. You gaze at the shimmering, brilliant blue ocean, gently rising and falling with the swell of the surf, and think to yourself, Wow, big water! You can't reach the ocean from here. The waves drown out your voice. The scenery says nothing. It just stands there and looks pretty. As you read in the brochure, this place is filled with dense bushes. Too bad you can't see them with all these plants in the way. You can't move the plants. They're firmly rooted. Unlike yourself. Don't try to talk to it. It's vegging out. The day is warm, the sun is bright, the sky is blue, and you're ready to forge ahead and be rejected again and again. Yes, all's right with the world. Though they're graceful and attractive, these palms are showing signs of abuse, heat, moisture, and a constant friction that have really given them a beating. Yeah, I can relate to that. You can't get a good grip on that. A feeling not wholly unfamiliar to you. You might have better luck if you hit on a member of the animal kingdom instead of a plant. Then again, maybe not. Oh, who goes there? It's me, Larry Laffer. <laughs> I was just going to walk to town, find a swinging discotheque, pick up some single babes. You know, just normal kind of resort stuff. That's what you think, fella. No one's allowed to leave the premises of La Costalotta without checking in with me, here in the gatehouse. This gatehouse doubles as the security central for the entire hotel and spa. No one can get in or out of the compound without the approval of Daryl, the gate guard. Excuse me, sir. Is this the way out of the spa? Maybe, maybe not. Who's asking? It's me, Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> I'd like to leave this place and head into town. You know, hit a few of the swinging singles bars, dance to some cool disco music, hit on some better chinks. <laughs> well, I don't have to tell you. You look like a swinger yourself. Swinger? Leave? <laughs> Let me check my roster. No way, Laffer. You ain't getting by me. You just go right back into your room and get with the program. Now, I'm warning you. There must be some sort of misunderstanding. I'm a guest of the famous TV show, Stallions. I was kind of a winner. You probably saw me on the show right here on one of your TVs. Stallions? <laughs> no, can't be. What do you mean, can't be? Because I know Shallow, the assistant producer of the Stallions, personally. She always arranges these freebie deals herself. Nope, <laughs> can't be. Um, Shallow was very busy after the show. <laughs> she had to leave quickly on a cruise with the other guy on the show. <laughs> I'm sure she just forgot to tell you. 
don't know nothing about cruises or busy. No, you can't get out until I get a paid receipt. But I am a guest here. Why can't I leave? Nobody leaves until they've paid their bill and showed me a paid receipt. But I'm not supposed to pay. That's what they all say. Back inside with you, Laffer. And don't try to sneak past me. I have ways of making you sorry if you get my drift. Let me see if I have this straight. I can't leave until I show you a receipt marked paid in full. Right. And I can't get a paid receipt until I pay my bill, right? Right. And since I'm a guest of Stallions, I don't pay for anything while I'm here, right? I don't know. That's between you and Shallow. She's the assistant producer. You talk to her. Oh, come on, guy. I say don't touch my equipment. Now, I've got a gun. Don't make me learn how to use it. Is there anything in your cute little guard's hut that I can take? Yeah, take a hike. Bathroom? Each guest room has complete bath-type facilities. That was what you were gonna ask. Isn't it? Uh, yeah. That's Daryl, the gate guard. Don't let his amiable looks deceive you. Beneath that sugared exterior lies a heart like a jelly donut. Hey, Hansel! Pardon me? Oh, oh, it's you. <laughs> no, no, it's okay. For a second there, I thought it was my night guard. Hans off. Would you mind if I picked you up and carried you around all through the spa, wherever I go? <laughs> Wouldn't that be fun? What are you, some kind of nut? From here, you can see the road leading away from the gatehouse to freedom. Perhaps you could make a break for it. Perhaps you'll get shot. Please don't smudge the window. The janitorial staff only comes around out here once every six months. And even then, all they do is steal the centerfolds from my magazines. There's nobody outside the window to hear your dulcet tones. The dials and pressure-sensitive buttons on these panels control the gate, the security cameras and monitors, the Muzak, the temperature of the pool water, the local climate, and the sign out front that announces the total number of soy burgers sold thus far. Please keep your hands and feet outside the station security guard, one each with strap barrier. Closed circuit cameras from throughout the hotel and spa beam their images here to the security booth, enabling one person to keep an eye on just about everything that happens in every room. Please don't smudge the monitors. I'm all out of those moist monitor towelettes. There are no microphones hooked up to the monitors, therefore visual surveillance only. This is where Daryl keeps his stash of Wayne Newton cassettes. An unused pair of handcuffs dangle from Daryl's belt. I wonder. I wonder if I could just slip that. Just return that to the pool when you're finished with it, please. What a rip! Now, security precautions prevent my picture from being published. Thanks, I got one right here in my little pouch. That 
had better not be Lacoste a lot of property, bub. Oh, no. I ain't brought it from home. I am not so sure. Your eyes tell me you are lying. To check out, just pay your bill and deposit your room key in the quickie checkout box beside the front desk, or ask Gammy for assistance. <laughs> So, somebody has to sleep in room 201. I can't do anything about the noise. Is this an attempted arson? Now be careful, pal. You're really playing with fire when you screw with me. Thanks. I like fruits like you. I could use that to polish my gun, but it's too little. Don't plan on walking off the premises with any of our property. Say, that's not marked property of La Costa Lotte, is it? Uh, no. In fact, it's no longer marked at all. You deftly attach the dental floss to the sunglasses polishing cloth to form a rather small European-style swimsuit. You are so clever, making a swimsuit out of dental floss. Where did you ever get that idea? You'd love to change into your swimsuit now, but La Costellata has a strict policy. No swimsuits except by the pool. From here in the water, you notice everyone sitting around the bar is riding an inflatable device. Unfortunately, guests are only allowed to drink at the pool's floating bar if they have an adequate approved flotation device. No, your gut doesn't qualify. Hey, move that bar over here, will ya? What are you doing? Marking your territory? A man floats beside the pool bar. He's sitting on something, but you can't tell. A woman floats beside the pool bar. She appears to be sitting on a large green cylindrical pool float. La Costellata's unique floating swimming pool bar drifts around while you circle the pool trying to keep up. There's not much to do at a bar except order drinks for yourself and possibly a friend. There's no need to do that here at the bar. Most people just enjoy drinking and talking, especially when a beautiful, nearly naked redhead is right beside you. Stop that! You're frightening the other swimmers. From your position in the water, you can appreciate the fine craftsmanship that went into the building of such a goofy device. You slide your hand along the plastic laminate bar and admire its finish. Who do you have to know to get a drink around here? 
There is no response. Perhaps you're not using the right signal. A male customer sits at the other side of the bar, riding an inflatable pussy, quietly drinking by himself. He seems to be no match for you in your quest to finally net yourself a catch like that babe on the cucumber. There's nothing you want to do to him, except not start him telling jokes. So, how do you order a drink here, stranger? Flap your tail, I guess. Hey, hey but more importantly, <laughs> Have you heard the one about her? <laughs> oh, no! It's you again! I remember you from Lefty's Bar in the land of the lounge lizards. If she ain't good enough for her family, she ain't good enough for ours! <laughs> It's that guy from Lefty's Bar, and he's still boring everybody around him by telling all those dirty jokes. Thank God he mumbles everything but the punchlines. Hey, buddy, do you mind? I'm trying to hustle this chick over here. You want to cut out the corny punchlines? And this I'm not getting with that. Poor time. Poor time. Now, aren't you sorry you had me neutered when I was a kitten? <laughs> no! Supper of a Step aside, girls. I got a gargle. <laughs> Supper of a table. Read the card, sweets. Just read the card. No! Supper of a table. Pull, timber, bullet. I just happened to be walking by when this refrigerator fell on me! Supper of a table. Paul, what's the matter, honey? Ain't you got no vase? <laughs> you see, the one in front is sick, and the one in the rear is pushing her to Mount Sinai. <laughs> get it, Mount Sinai! Get, get, get. You have no sense of humor. Supper of a table. Paul, oh, sure. Easy for you, Senator Kennedy. <laughs> So you're gonna screw around or you're gonna play golf? <laughs> because her balls hang out of her bitty skirt! <laughs> and the horse limped back to the barn! <laughs> well, we can save the woman, but I'm afraid it's too late for the rabbi. <laughs> Well, Mike, I guess you're gonna hate Thursdays. Supper of a table, pole, timber, bowl, a tata. Ooh, too bad Mother wasn't here. We could have saved the horse and wagon. Supper of a table, pole, timber, You sure don't look Jewish. <laughs> This woman is so beautiful, you nearly swoon and slip off your beaver. Try to control yourself, Larry. While you would like to reach over and touch that beautiful woman, you would probably slip off your beaver and embarrass yourself if you tried. Don't do that. If you take her cucumber out from between her legs, she'll be unable to stay here at the bar. You realize it's going to take a little something extra to get to talk to this doll. Let's see, she's sitting at a bar. Keep your gherkin away from that cucumber. Your beaver's tail is authentically wide, perfect for water slapping. You decide to order a drink. Yes, sir. You slapped? Yes. I'd like to order a drink for myself and the, uh, <coughs> beautiful young lady floating beside me. Very good, sir. Do you have any identification? Get your hands off me! Really? Just order a drink. I've got enough to do without making small talk with the likes of you. Want to talk? Talk to this guy. He's always got something to say.
gosh. That's the first one of those I've gotten. Today. I'm sorry, but if you have no proof of your status here, I'll be unable to fill your order. You decide to order a drink. Yes, sir. You slapped? Yes, Mr. Thomas, sir. I remember your room number from last week. All the girls were talking about the quantity of beverages you ordered. Jim, what would you like? Ah, yes, sir. What would you like? I'd like a tequila sunrise, and uh, how about a King Alphonse for the lady? I'm sorry, sir. This is a health spa. We only have healthful drinks here. Instead of that poison you ordered, I'll bring you something better. A seaweed sunrise and um, a king alfalfa for the lady. Seaweed? Ugh. Um, how about a frozen daiquiri? Frozen daiquiri? Oh, you mean a frozen broccoli. Coming right up. Sir, that will be fifty dollars. Like I care. As long as you charge it to my room. Here you go, babe. Enjoy your drink. <laughs> Thank you. Hey, these drinks are watered down. What did you expect? I have to carry them underwater. I couldn't help but notice you hanging out here at the pool bar. Allow me to introduce myself. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> Laughter? <laughs> Whatever. Anyway, I'm Marilee. Marilee Lowe is the perfect woman for you, Larry. She makes up in the body department for what she lacks in brains. <laughs> that tickles. May I have a few of those drops of water, Marilee? <laughs> Larry, just order a drink like everyone else does. Is your drink okay, Mayor? Oh, sure, good enough. I'm not picky. I just try to stay happy all the time. Wow, look at that. My boyfriend has one of those, only his sticks out. Merrily Lowe has thick, wavy, strawberry blonde hair. In fact, Merrily is strawberry cheesecake. You run your fingers through Merrily's hair. Ow! Oh, I'm sorry. I lost a bobby pin in there somewhere. Ooh, you caveman, you! The way her lips are slightly parted, you can just tell she really wants it. Wants what? You know, it. Oh yeah, I know. I think. Hoping she'll suck on your fingers, you casually wave your hand in front of her face. Oh, gotta go! Her arms look freckalicious. As you stroke Merrily's arm, her freckles seem to quiver with delight. You attempt to gently take her arm to lead her to some cozy corner to explore Mother Nature's sweaty wonders. But she stands her ground, not quite ready to make the commitment with a curious little horny man tugging at her arm. You'd love to kiss every inch of Merrily's befreckled neck. But why stop there? 
Mare's neck is smooth and slightly damp from her last dip in the pool. And she's letting you touch it. Say, that's a good sign. Thanks for wiping that stuff off. I don't know what that was. Oh, stop pinching! <laughs> Merrily's stomach is the only part of her that's flat. You start to reach over to touch Merrily's incredible tummy, but your hands begin to tremble, your knees knock, you start to drool, and sweat breaks out all over your body. Oh, yeah, I'm warm too. Gee, with those huge bolts of green cloth in the way, you can hardly tell what her breasts look like. Hey now, what kind of girl do you think I am anyway? Well, I was hoping you were. One of those sleazy babes you met in Larry 2 or 3. Well, yeah. Huh. Well, you'll never find out that way. <laughs> you men are all alike. Just because a woman wears a simple, tasteful bikini, all you think about is groping. You certainly have a beautiful smile, Mare. You must be enjoying yourself immensely. Oh, no. I'm miserable, actually. In fact, I'm more than just a little pissed off at La Costalada's silly management and their strict adherence to local laws. Why, Mare, whatever is the matter? Is there anything I can do? Oh, Larry. Sweet to be concerned about little me, but really, there's nothing you can do. This monkey I've got to carry on my own back. No one can break an addiction for you. I must handle it by myself. Addiction? Local laws? Mare, are you in some sort of trouble? Is it drugs? All right. Here's our chance to add some socially redeeming value to this little saga. Drugs? How gauche. It's nothing so mundane as that. No, it's worse. Far worse. Larry, I, I may as well be honest with you. I... I suffer from... From... I... I... I suffer from... B.A. It's punchy addiction. You're addicted to luggage tie downs. No, silly, bungee jumping. I want to do nothing in life but jump. Well, it started simply enough. A first small hit at a friend's party, then cranes at local county fairs, later, a few bridges here and there. But I got to the point where I had to have more, constantly more, higher, deeper, longer. I was going down 40 or 50 times a day. I graduated to balloons, but even that wasn't enough. But then, I heard about... La Casa Lata. Here? This place? <laughs> Get your head out of the bikinis, Larry, and take a look straight up. I don't get it. You should be overjoyed to have a setup like this. What's the problem? These provincial thinkers, that's what's wrong. They have some sort of stupid law that limits you to ten jumps per day. I'm not sure, but... Uh, isn't there something in the Constitution about this? Yeah, in the part about the right to arm bears, I think. Oh, that there was. And do you know what's worse? You mean, there's something worse than only getting to bungee jump ten times per day? Uh, what is it? Well, I've, I've gotten to the point where I can only become sexually aroused if I'm high in the air, tied up with long rubber ropes. Mm hmm Oh, Larry, have you figured out a way for me to gain access to the bungee jumping tower yet? No, but I'm giving it lots of thought.
No thanks, got one! Cool flotation device, that is. Wow, doesn't that shot off the top of the bungee jumping tower just turn you on? Mm, how interesting, but I don't think this would stretch large enough for me. To bungee jump with. <laughs> Isn't this stuff great? I just love to rub it all over the parts of my body that don't get suntanned. Is that a key to the bungee tower? No, I don't think so. I have the pattern memorized, you know. But it is rather close, don't you think? I would love to have a key, but not that one. It would do you no good anyway. It's amazing! How do you keep it dry? Oh, fresh fruit is not what I crave, Larry. Oh, I get that free too. Have you noticed? It seems awfully soft to me. Yeah, I wish I had a dollar for every time I've heard that. Oh, I've got a towel somewhere over there on the pool deck. But thanks for being so considerate. I do sunburn easily. With this wrench, you could unbolt the entire tower. Yeah, right. Oh, well, thanks anyway, Larry. But I don't know what I'd do with that. People are getting something from you. Uh, uh, what is it? Um, may I get something too? Sir, besides the important job of guarding the lives here at the pool, I'm also responsible for maintaining strict security over our combination high diving tower and bungee jumping platform. The gate to the tower, which you may have noticed over there, well, it's kept security locked at all times. Uh, no one, and I mean absolutely no one, is allowed admittance without proving their qualifications to yours truly. Guest safety is our first concern here at La Costa Lada. We can't afford to have any of our paying customers injured in any way. You understand? Oh, I'm not a paying customer. I'm here on a freebie. Oh, well, here you go, pal. The key to the diving tower looks just about like every other key in the spa. Good idea, but while the room key enters the lock easily, it won't turn no matter how you jiggle it. Too scared to dive, huh? Happens to a lot of our guests. None of the real men, of course, but uh, a lot of women and, uh, others. Oh! Mr. Billy, I've decided I'm more than man enough. I'm gonna go for it. I wanna live for the moment. I'm gonna go for the gusto. Sounds to me like you're, uh, Mr. Cliché. I suspect you're going to request the diving tower key again, right? Why, yes, of course. Oh, well, here you go, pal. Hey, you. What in the hell do you think you're doing with my key? Damn, he saw you. But it really is a good idea to make an impression of that key. If only there was some place nearby where Billy D couldn't see you do it.
good idea. That lifeguard will never notice you making an impression of his key in your bar of soap from this height. Now you know why they call this impressive soap. It's a good thing something around here knows how to leave a good impression. It looks like you're above the atmosphere, but that's an illusion caused by the curvature of the Earth. You're really only a few miles up. You can't reach it from here. Maybe if you jumped and tried to grab it in mid-air. <laughs> There's nothing here you can take. Deal with it. You're stuck. There's only one way down, buddy. Oh, please! Let me down from here! Sorry, Larry. There's only one way down, and you know what that is. You don't have to go. It doesn't matter. Your bladder emptied automatically about 50 feet up the ladder. Oh, God, looking down at those buildings is making you nauseous. You can't reach the windows from the platform. There'll be no ledge climbing to get off of here. What are you trying to do? Bring the ground closer by pulling up the buildings? Help! Nobody can hear you, Larry. They're all on the ground far below waiting for your swan dive. Yeah, more like swan song. Ordinarily, you could think of nothing so satisfying as playing hit the window from up here. But your little game will have to wait. This is the accursed ladder you wish you had never climbed. Sorry, Larry, but you'd never forgive yourself if you had to crawl back down that ladder like a helpless kitten. You know the only way down from here that will keep what little self-esteem you have left is... Jump! This ladder is firmly bolted to the platform, not like that Hicktown water tower in Freddy Farkas Frontier Pharmacist. Oops, did that give away a clue? The ladder makes a lousy conversationalist. At least you two have something in common. That would only make the rungs more treacherous. You're standing on a large concrete platform, hundreds of feet above water level, looking down at what you once thought was a rather large swimming pool. It seems solid enough to hold your weight indefinitely. That fits in very nicely with your current line of thinking that perhaps you'll just stay up here forever. This particular slab of concrete seems too heavy to lift. Probably because I'm standing on it. Yep, that's the ticket. There's no point talking to this platform. The concrete is stone deaf. Either that's La Costellata's swimming pool 100 feet below you, or there's a small blue kidney bean with ants all over it, hovering just past the end of the platform. Hey! You guys want to see me do a cannonball? You're so high, no one can hear you. It reminds me of my college days. That really hurt. No way! Billy D said the next time he caught me trying to sneak up the tower, he was gonna throw me off without my bungee!
Now you have a bar of impressed imported oat bran soap. Don't mess up your good impression. You may need that for reference someday. Don't chance damaging that delicate impression you made. Comparing the impression in the bar of soap to that key you filched from the lobby, you notice they are exactly the same size and type. The key has only a few bumps of metal here and there. Remove them and they'd be a perfect match. Hey you! Stay out of those bushes with my key. Just what are you trying to pull? Hey, you! Yeah, you! Get back here with my key. Here's your key back, Mr. D. Or may I call you Billy? Preferably, don't call me. This door bears a tiny brass plaque with a delicate La Costellata logo and the words Aerobics Classroom. What a wonderful place you stumbled upon, Larry. A room filled with hot, sweaty women dressed in skimpy, tight-fitting outfits. There's nothing in the aerobics room for you to take, at least right there. Hey girls, new man on campus. There's no discernible response. This is not a good place to expose yourself. Those gals look tough. <sighs> There's another beautiful woman I'll never have. This girl is concentrating on her exercises. This woman is totally engrossed in her exercises. She's too busy trying to keep up to talk to you. This lady is too busy checking out the other girl's bodies. They're too busy working out to notice tiny details. Peering through Cav's record collection, you find one album that particularly excites you. The soundtrack from Leisure Suit Larry Six, Shape Up or Slip Out, written and produced by Dan Kaler. Keep your hands off my stereo system, you idiot! Perhaps I shouldn't bother her. She's quite focused on her work. Full spectrum fluorescent bulbs are so hip. What are you trying to do? Burn your hands on the bulbs? Those are fluorescent lights. The aerobics instructor thoughtfully has a spotlight aimed directly at her, so all her students can study every muscle moving in her body. You can't reach the spotlight from here. You can't unscrew the bulb. You can't climb on anything to take the bulb from the socket. In fact, that light is absolutely worthless to you. There is one empty aerobic step just waiting for another overweight body.
This could be a big step in your life if you'd only try. Maybe I'll join in. I haven't worked out in the last three games. You! Yes, you! Keep up! Hey, white suit! You're falling behind! Isn't letting you keep up! Yes, you! The one with no breasts! You've got no rhythm at all! That's it! Forget it! Class dismissed! Everybody out! All right, now that those girls are out of here, <laughs> I've got the aerobics babe all to myself. Hello, miss. My name is Larry. Larry Laffer. <laughs> <laughs> nice to meet you, little man. My name is Cavaricci Poirnay. And based upon your proven athletic abilities, your name should be on my class roster. Gee, thanks. I guess. Here you are, face to face with Cavaricci Barnet, La Castellata's stunningly built aerobics instructor. One look at her is the equivalent of a two hour workout. Ooh la la! Nice muscle development on that right hand, Larry. You've been working out with it? Uh, sorta. Well, nice job. Keep it up. <laughs> that, that's uh, what I was trying to do. You'd take anything you can get, wouldn't you? Oops, uh, I thought you wouldn't want that. Cap, do you think it's possible for a hunk like me to develop an even better body? No. Yeah, it is a work of art, isn't it? Art wasn't the man I was thinking of. Which do you admire more, my body or my mind? <laughs> Larry. You're one of the few men with equal development in both places. How did you end up with such a great job, Cav? It doesn't pay that well, but uh, at least I'm doing what I like. Watching young women sweat in skimpy tight clothing. I can relate to that. Cavaricci Varney's face is angular and handsome with a determined, firm-jawed look so typical of aerobics instructors and neo-Nazis. Cavaricci is beautiful, in a handsome sort of way. Hmm, like this face? It's all muscle, too. You bet she can press 150 with just those jaw muscles. A large earring dangles from Cav's right ear. Sorry, Larry. You can't have my earring. It's a gift from an admirer. Oh, some guy you helped um, build up? No, some guy I helped wear down. Ouch! It's an earring, not a ripcord. Cav's sexy, muscular body functions like a well-oiled machine. Wonder if she's open to a little more oiling. Feel free to check out those abs. Pretty impressive, no? No flab on me, baby. Solid rock. 
How odd. Cav's t-shirt seems to say, homo. Oh, wait a minute. That's the top half of USMC. Imagine the implications. I see you're interested in my employee identification though. If you think you're man enough to take the shirt off my back, I'd be more than willing to prove that you're not. What a perfectly curvaceous right breast that is. Why, it's enough to make you swear off left breasts forever. What a perfectly curvaceous left breast that is. Why, it's enough to make you swear off right breasts forever. Careful, pal. You're not man enough for a breast like this one. Watch it, Buster. You're about to lose that hand. Cavaricci's badge proclaims her an official employee of La Castellata, entitled to all the rights and privileges thereof. Including the right to hit on the guests. I should be so lucky. Lucky badge. You'd love to hang out with company like that. I couldn't help but notice your employee ID badge, Cav. What a lovely likeness of you. Oh, that? I don't really like that photo. I was, how you say, having a bad moose day? I suppose you're right. It doesn't hold a candle to the real thing. I guess I just like the way it dangles way out there in space. <laughs> Twisting slowly, slowly in the wind. You're rather funny for a man. Badges? We don't need no stinking badges. <laughs> Larry, you are a weird one. But I like weird. Oh no. Oops. <laughs> Look, your badge got caught on my finger. Okay, now I have to amputate my finger. <laughs> or you can give me your badge. Either way, you pick. <laughs> I don't care. I have to admit, in spite of your Y chromosome, I find you rather funny. Well then, take the badge. I get in anywhere I want to and without no stinking badges. <laughs> In fact, I have an idea. Let's meet later today for a sauna together, hmm? Bring your best girl and meet me in the Swedish sauna. We'll know double date, hmm? Excellent. Now, who will I get to play the role of my best girl? And what will Kat bring as her date? Watch it! Oh, all right, Larry. You can have a quick peek. Oh, wow! Of course, you know now that you've seen them, you're going to have to die. This is the weight room, where you can find everything you need to beef up, put some ripples on your bread basket, lose that beer gut, and see a little cheesecake. Hmm, suddenly I feel hungry. You run your hand over the surface, giving your hand a tremendous workout as you stretch those wrist muscles and bend those fingertips. <sighs> That's way too heavy for you to take. The clanging of the dumbbells is so loud you can hardly hear anything. Maybe if those dumbbells would put down the weights and stop exercising for a second, you could hear. 
That's the only muscle you can't exercise in here. That looks like a Joe Widerbutt 10 station cross training weight bench, equipped to do arm curls, butterflies, leg curls, leg extensions, bench presses, lateral pull downs, shoulder presses, abdominal crunches, and hernia pulls. You consider doing some quick reverse pull downs or crossover butterflies, but why try to improve on perfection? The weight bench is just a little too heavy for you to move. What if you removed those weights, detached the cables, removed the seats, and discarded all those nuts and bolts? What if you just forget it? Assorted barbells line the walls of the weight room. Just what you need. More things you can't pick up, no matter how hard you try. Babe alert! A sleek, sweaty super chick works out on the stair machine, wearing a shiny polyester workout suit. What more could you ask for? Truly, here's your perfect woman. Big breasts and man-made fabrics. She's way too hot for you to handle, Larry. She sizzles where you just fizzle. Say, baby, instead of these steps, what do you say you and me go stepping out together? I'd rather lay your puny body across these steps and do a tap dance on your skull. Uh-huh. Was that a no? Some egghead is actually trying to read while she gets her cellulite redistributed. And no, that was not a free plug for some electronic boutique that sells software, etc. You caught a quick feel from the woman using the wriggle machine. With all her quivering blubber, she doesn't even notice. Shake that thang, baby. In fact, shake all those thangs. It's a leg bench, a state-of-the-art resistance machine designed to firm up those quadrupeds, define those incisors, and trim those sartorials. Hi, cutie. How you doing? What? You, climb on, lay down, and shut up, boy. My name is Christina Priscilla Diana Van Dyke. Oh. Do I have to remember all that? But... The only people who called me that are dead now. Oh. You may, and in fact will, call me Thunderbird. Thunderbird looks to be one tough chick. From her leather outfit to her defiant, challenging gaze, you can tell this is one woman who takes her pleasure seriously. It gives you goosebumps just thinking about it. You missed me. I'm over here. There's nothing on me that you can take. In fact, I'm not sure you could even take me. Hello, miss. I couldn't help but notice the muscles in your inner thighs. What? I mean, I couldn't help notice the uh, magic in your intense eyes. Sure, anytime. But first, how's about you doing a little something for me? Thunderbird's curly auburn hair cascades down the back of her head and across her shoulders. Just for a moment, you wonder what it would be like if you were small enough to run naked through that forest of hair. Actually, you're nearly the correct size now. You long to run your fingers through that silky, sultry hair. In fact, you long to run any of your appendages through that silky, sultry hair. You can't take my hair. It's one of my three best features. Rather kinky idea. But first, practice some restraint. Her eyes are blue. No, maybe they're brown. 
wait, they could be hazel. Oh, it's hard to tell what color her eyes are. Who could see anything but those glorious breasts? Hey, Hannibal Lecter, keep that finger out of my eye. Thunderbird's got that famous downward smile that Charlene Tilton perfected. It makes her look sexy, forbidden, unhappy, and expensive. Get your hand away from my mouth, or I may have to teach you a lesson. Promises, promises. Thunderbird's delicate neck arches sensuously as she gazes at you. You wonder what her neck would look like straining in the throes of ecstasy. Of course, it's not like you would be there, but still... You can think of nothing more exciting than caressing Thunderbird's bare, sexy neck. Unless it's following that neck to its logical conclusion. What's this trying to take my body parts? You gonna build the Bride of Larry Stein? Lay off! Look at those strong, slender arms. You can practically taste them. And if you get your way, you will. Hey, I don't remember ordering you to touch me. Well, no, I, I, I guess you... That's right. And you won't touch me until I tell you when and where. Got it? I, um, well, yeah, uh, sure. And until then, stop drooling on my weights. A studded wristband encircles Thunderbird's slender wrist. It feels like real leather, and the studs feel like real studs. Of course, you're not exactly sure what a real stud feels like. You like leather, little man boy? I've got more leather than you know what to do with. Only you wouldn't know what to do with it. Wait a minute. Well, you know what I mean. Those are two of the most magnificent, awe-inspiring, mouth-watering, five-car pile-up-causing breasts that any woman has ever possessed. Halt! You may only admire these from afar. For now, at least. Thunderbird has two of the most perfectly formed hips you've ever seen on a woman. For just a moment, you seriously consider tracing that lacing. But you know your heart couldn't take the strain. You can't take my hips. They're busy keeping my legs attached to my body. At some mystical point inside those shorts, Thunderbird's perfect derriere turns into a pair of legs that men would die for. And between. You can't move her legs. They seem to be pinned tightly together. And doesn't that sound like fun? You can't have them. I plan to walk later. Nice outfit. When are you going to stop having your mommy pick out your clothes? Oh, she doesn't pick out my clothes anymore. I think a 90s guy has to know when to bypass the fickle whims of Paris haughty couture and stick with the stylish lines of a true classic. Hence, the white leisure suit has become, how may I say it, something of a symbol of mine. Hmm. I see. I gotta admit, it's you. Why, thank you. You don't know how many people comment on it. Oh, I can imagine. What brings you to La Costa Lana, little boy? Oh, I'm here on a junket, actually. <laughs> you see, I was one of the winners of a recent broadcast of Stallions, that hot new TV show for hot new studs like, um, what? So I suppose you'll be here for the two-week visit instead of the weekend the first place guys receive. Gosh, Thunderbird, 
You sure do know your TV shows. I should. How do you think I got here? So, babe, um, what do you say you and me get to know each other a little better? Honey, there's not much about you I need to know. And there's not much about me you'd care to learn. But I suppose a little session later on would be okay. I just have one problem, Larry. Uh, problem? Uh, what problem, T-Bird? That's Thunderbird to you, Larry. Oh. My problem is simple. I'm having so much fun here that I wore out my only pair of handcuffs. So, if you want to have fun with me, you'll have to bring me a little hardware. Handcuffs? Where am I supposed to get handcuffs at a health spa? That's your problem, Laffer. All I know is, I'm gonna sit here and work this machine until you do. So come back anytime, but bring a little hardware with you. Yeah, sure. And that's your picture there on the badge. You with the large breasts. Don't you just love where that staple goes right through my navel? Gee, thanks. Got any place I can hang this? Tie you up with an electrical cord. Hmm, sounds interesting. Hey, get that away from my face! Your room? Ha! Huh, you probably don't have any equipment there. Those may be light anywhere matches, but don't try it on me, Buster. Thanks. Keep it. Who needs an orange? Cute. I don't want your lousy posies. Hey, get that away from my face. Honey, I'm more into stainless steel and chrome than stuff like that.